But okay, now back to the security of this thing. Uh, okay, the security really, you know, it looks like a fairly you know, complicated thing when you look at the wiring diagram and all that. But once you dissect it, really the security comes down, really the interesting security issue comes down to those S boxes. The rest of it, the permutations and all that, that's all linear stuff. Now why is, okay, if you're a crypto analyst trying to break a cipher, you would like a cipher to have only linear stuff in it. That would be your dream come true. Why? No mathematicians out there? What can you tell me about linear equations? Linear equations are easy to solve. Okay? If your cipher is entirely linear, you can almost surely set up linear equations involving the key, and you solve those equations if you know some plain text, know some ciphertext, and you can get the key. Okay? So you cannot have a cipher that's entirely linear. It's just not going to work. And the only thing it does that's not linear are those S boxes. Those lookup tables are not linear operations. Okay, so you have to have something nonlinear in your cipher, and there it is. That's the only place it shows up in DES. So people could see those things are critical, and now NSA went in there and made all these subtle changes. You know, what the heck's going on? Well, okay, so the bottom line is, you know, 30, more than 30 years of really intense analysis of data as people, you know, you could go to crypto, you could go to crypto conferences any time in the last 30 years, and there'd probably be talks on data. Okay, it's really been studied uh, to death. The bottom line is there's no backdoor, okay? Nobody's found a shortcut attack. And in fact, the changes that were made to the S boxes made the uh, algorithm more resistant to certain types of attacks. In particular, these certain types of attacks, so-called differential cryptanalytic attacks, were unknown in the outside world at the time these changes were made to the algorithm. They were only rediscovered based on the changes that were made. <laughs> okay, basically people reverse engineering the changes that were made. They discovered, okay, these changes were made for a reason. Surely the big change that NSA made that would have made it easier to crack is going from 128 bits. Okay, to that, that's a good point. Okay, you know, it's kind of obvious. You know, you go from 128 bits to a 56 bit key. 128 bits, there's no way you're going to do an exhaustive key search. 56 bits at the time, 1975, would have taken a really tremendous uh, major effort to, uh, to uh, break. However, there is some crypt, crypt, crypt analytic work that suggests that the sort of underlying algorithm, the Lucifer algorithm, is sort of no stronger than 56 bits. In other words, even if you had a 128-bit key, the actual work to break it is sort of on the order of 56 bits. So reducing the key looks pretty dramatic, but probably didn't really change the security very much. i got to put a plug in there for my old employer. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the bottom line is, you know, the attacks today that you, and people have, this probably 10 years ago, um, a group got together and actually developed a device to break days. And they could break a key in, you know, half a day or something like that on average. So it's certainly, you know, too big to use today. But it's not trivial even today to break a 56 bit key. I and mean, it takes some serious effort to do that. It costs them $50,000 or something at the time to break it. But anyway, the ultimate conclusion here is that. You know, who, whoever made these changes to uh, DES, which was NSA, you know, they made the algorithm stronger, okay, and they knew what they were doing, okay, they didn't just make a random change, they didn't just get lucky, okay? they really did make it more resistant to certain kinds of attacks. Okay. So the, the evidence is that at the time, well, IBM was way ahead of most of the cryptography world and NSA was way ahead of them. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny now to see these uh, people at IBM who worked on this project, you know, some of them. There, there's a quote, I think it's actually in a manuscript somewhere. One of the developers of Lucifer said, well, we had these S boxes, we sent them off to Washington, and they came back and they were all different. <laughs> they didn't tell them what they were doing either, but I think they kind of figured out what was going on uh, uh, eventually. A couple of them ended up being big cryptographers you know, later on as well. Uh, anyway, okay, so on to... Uh, uh, block cipher notation. Okay, so you need to have some way to specify the plain text, cipher text block, and encryption, and all that sort of stuff. So uh, this will be our our block cipher notation, kind of our generic 
a, a symmetric cipher notation as well. Okay. So we start off with the plain text block, call it P. The result of encryption, that's the cipher text, we'll call that C. If we encrypt with the key K, we'll use this notation. The big E for encrypt, plain text with the key K to get the cipher text. Okay, now to decrypt, we'll use, logically enough, a D. <laughs> so we decrypt the cipher text with the same key K, we get back the plain text we started. Now this is the sense in which it's a code book, right? As long as the key doesn't change, you're just really effectively looking up that plain text block in your code book and getting the cipher text block that comes out. When you decrypt, you're looking up in the sort of inverse code book to get the cipher text back to the plain text. Now, okay, so this is kind of the crucial thing that if you encrypt and decrypt the result using the same key, you get back what you started. Conversely, you can decrypt, you know, and encrypt and get back what you started with, as long as it's the same key. What happens if you use a different key, right? Suppose you encrypt with one key and you decrypt with a different key. What's going to happen? Okay, why would you not expect to get back the same plain text? What? It's a different code book, exactly right. It's like you look up the plain text in one code book, you look up the cipher text in a different, it's not going to work. Okay, almost surely you're not going to get that what you started with. Okay, so you would not expect those to work just by thinking in terms of the code book. Um, okay, now DES, a 56-bit key, everyone agrees, is too, too short. You shouldn't be using DES today. But people have grown to love DES. Over 30 years of using DES, they just can't break away from DES. <laughs> they have this algorithm, they have the code, they, they like DES. So is there any way you can make DES more secure by effectively lengthening the key without monkeying with the internals of the algorithm? Because you don't want to risk you know, making the algorithm weaker. The answer is yes. There's a thing called triple DES. Um, so everyone agrees the 56-bit key is not enough because you can do an exhaustive search. Okay, and people have proven that. Okay, but DES is, of course, everywhere, very widely used. So one thing you can do, um, probably the smart thing you can do is switch to a different algorithm, but people still insist on using it. So there is an RFC that describes this triple DES, and it does get used quite a bit. Um, now triple, triple 56 is what? Not 112. Okay, it's 168, right? Okay, but it says 112 bit key. I thought there was triple. What the heck's going on here? Okay, it's a little bit subtle the way they define this. Okay, it's triple in the sense of doing three DES operations. Okay, the encrypt and decrypt here represent DES, right? Um, but only two different keys. Okay, two independent DES keys. So two times 56 is 120. Okay, so here's the way we're going to define it. We're going to start with our plain text, right? Which is how many bits? 64, because it's just like this, right? Okay. Now we're going to start with two keys. Each key is how many bits? 56, because they're DES keys. So we encrypt that plain text with key K1. Then we decrypt the result of that with the key K2, which does not give us B, because okay, they're different keys. And we encrypt the result again with the key K1, and we call that ciphertext. So it's a 112-bit key, but you know three <coughs> DES operations. Okay, fine, we can define our encryption however we want, but can we decrypt? Okay, can we decrypt this guy? If you know K1 and K2, can you decrypt this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just sort of peel the onion kind of thing, right? Okay, start here. What's the first thing you want to do? Encrypt with the key K1, you get rid of that part. Okay, then encrypt with the key K2, you get rid of that part. And finally, decrypt again with the key K1, you get back the plain text you started with. Okay. Okay, but the question is, why? Why on earth would you define it this way? And in particular, why the three operations here? We're only using two keys. So why do we do three operations and why would we do encrypt, decrypt, encrypt? Yeah, how about that? Encrypt, decrypt, en we're encrypting here. Why don't we encrypt, encrypt, encrypt? Why put that decrypt in the middle? That's pretty confusing, isn't it? Same algorithm. It's what? It's the same algorithm. 
It is basically the same algorithm. So why do decrypt instead of encrypt? And it's just really the order in which you use the keys, right? Just use the sub key. It's really the only thing that changes. It's no more efficient. So why on earth do you? I ask this every semester. Nobody's ever got it except for this morning. Some guy just blew it off the answer. I couldn't believe it because it's so non-obvious. <laughs> okay. Um, the point is, it's there for backwards compatibility, <laughs> believe it or not. The thinking is this. Suppose um, you're very security conscious, so you implement triple dead. Your friend, you know, doesn't care, doesn't give a hoot, and they use single deads. But yet, you still have to be able to communicate with somebody who's using single deads, but now all your software does triple deads. So what could you do? Well, if you use triple deads with one key, Make K1 equal K2 equal K. Then you get single deads. How's that? Well, you <coughs> encrypt the plain text with the key K, then you decrypt with the key K, and you get back <coughs> right where you started, right? And then you encrypt with the key K, and it's as if you did one DES operation. It's a very expensive way to do DES, I admit, but it works, you know, it gives you uh, the same result. <laughs> So not obvious, right? Um, okay, how about the two key thing? That's not so obvious either, okay? The, the fact is that if you use three different keys, you could do that, right? They could have defined it, use K1, K2, K3. However, if you do that, it's no more secure than if you did two keys. Okay, you don't get any benefit from using that third key. And you do need the three DES operation. You can't get away with just two DES operations because they're kind of a meet in the middle sort of attack. It's on the next slide. I don't want to go through the details. I mean, it just uh, takes too long. But you 265 students might get a chance to actually think about this more. Okay. So uh, two keys just don't, don't work because there's this sort of uh, possible attack. And it's really, you know, if you could do, um, you can't get away with just using two, two operations here. And even if you try doing three independent keys, you run into sort of the same problem that shows up here. 